Assalamu alaikum, marhaba, and hello. So sometimes in life, you think you know so much about a certain thing, right? Until one day you meet a professional or expert who absolutely schools you, whether it's about life or culture, or in our case today, food. Well, I had the pleasure of meeting Palestinian chef Dima Sharif in her kitchen, virtually of course, and boy oh boy did she school me about one of my favorite Palestinian dishes, the one, the only, msakhan. Or as we both agreed on calling it, Palestine's national dish. I learned a lot about how deeply rooted msakhan is in our Palestinian heritage, about the different forms of sumat used, and believe it or not, chicken was actually considered optional in msakhan back in the day. I know, it's hard to believe. Wait, why am I still talking? Let's hear from chef, author, and entrepreneur Dima Shidi herself in this episode of Turning Tables, Palestinian Cooking with a Twist. So tell me, what are we gonna cook today? So today, of course, when we talk about Palestinian cuisine, we all know that msakhan is it. It is it, it's the national dish of all of Palestine, the one dish that all the people identify with. The stories of msakhan are beautiful and also the prep is beautiful. Why we do what we do is, is very beautiful. So we will talk about all of this in time as we may. Um, the reason why I've chosen it other than it's the national dish is because it's one of those dishes that we all love to have. And a lot of the times, and I am not against that at all, it's very messy. So I want to create an, an a la mode, very modern version of msakhan that you can create as canapes or you can put on a buffet, uh, especially with the appetizers and stuff, Ramadan, you know, people like to serve a lot of things. This will allow you to savor the msakhan itself, to enjoy having the same flavors in a very different way. However, because the traditional one is unmatched for the days when you want to roll your sleeves and like dig in comfort food. So I'm also going to show you exactly how we do the traditional way, but just, you know, do the presentation differently. Okay, so before we start, msakhan, the word, what does it mean? It means heated, something mm -hmm. that we heat. And therefore, we start with the ingredient why msakhan was conceived, which is olive oil. Olive oil in Palestine is synonymous. It's uh, the olive tree has become even representing of the Palestinian people. It's become representing of the identity as well. And mm -hmm. Palestine is the country in the world where you have the most olive trees per capita. So relatively to its size. Interesting. So, yeah, and that is why... I never knew that. Yeah. Now, back in the sure. day, when msakhan was conceived, there are ways for you to tell the quality of this olive oil. And one of the ways is, uh, of course, not the only way, but one of the ways is heating oil. So, zayt msakhan. Leish el heating, la'inno, if the oil, when it's heated, if it gives you a lot of heat in here, it should give you at the back of your throat some warmth. But if it gives you peppery, peppery, like as in chili kind of heat, if this oil, um, you know, coagulates somehow and starts creating spots of very dark uh, green that is kind of uh, jelly in texture, mm, mm, that mm. also means this oil is cheated. So. After people would taste the oil and like the oil and everything, the people who would sell the oil will also heat that oil and give you a taster of the heated oil for you to see the qualities. Now, people are tending this oil, they love this oil, they made you taste the oil. They're not gonna let that hot oil just go. And you know, in Palestine, and as we speak, I will start preparing. So I yeah. just put here some oil in, in my pot and you need to put a good amount of oil because here we're not talking about uh, just sauteing. We're actually cooking the onion in the oil and we want the onion to absorb that flavor. Before you turn the heat on, I would add the salt now. The reason being, if you salt the oil, you're distributing the salt flavor to everything that you are cooking in the end. It will seem like a little bit extra salt 
two reasons why I'm doing this. One, because I'm going to cook a good amount of uh, onions in here. And two, I'm using Himalayan pink salt, which is less salty than salt. Black pepper. So we add the black pepper. And now I'm just going to mix, then turn the heat on. So already you can smell the oil. You can I wish I could pepper. smell it. <laughs> My oh, favorite smell. If it wasn't they didn't... for... I know. Corona, you would be here eating this. <laughs> it's food. true, I would be, I would be. Uh, olive oil gets hot really quickly, smoking point is very close, and we do not want to reach that point. We're just warming. While it's warming, I'm just going to grab the onions from the fridge. We keep the onions in the fridge. So Dima, it's okay to cook with salt? I thought it like makes things dry when you cook meat with salt. The difference between home cooking and professional cooking is, is that specifically. Salt, you can add it at the different stages of cooking. Uh, when you add it early on, it aids browning. It, that, and why does it do that? Because it dries food up. And we want to dry those onions. Ah, we want got to get it. rid of that water. We want to brown them a little bit. But if it was and like chicken, would you add the salt to cook the chicken? Yes, of course. But I thought it dries the chicken, no? No. The chicken <laughs> dries if, if it cooks too long. That's okay. it. That's the only way you can dry a chicken. The salt <laughs> itself. <laughs> That's so embarrassed. This is like really elementary basics. <laughs> okay, now, because I can hear the oil and I don't want it to uh, heat up too much and smoke. You know sure. that the oil is hot. You can hear it. You can smell it. The smell tells you it's hot. And then it becomes a little bit more runny. Like you can see mm. here, you can move it around. You know, olive oil is a thick oil. Now we're going to add the onions. And I'll show you in a minute, but just to release the heat from the oil. Why did I choose to do um, this size? Is because one, I want the flavor of the onion to be there. So I want bigger chunks of the onion. Two, this onion is going to wilt and it's going to become small um, in volume. And um, these chunks keep it from becoming too spreadable. So it, does it become caramelized? No. Now, let me just correct something because I hear a lot of chefs that msakhan is caramelized onions. It's not. Okay. It's confit onions. Confit is when you cook at low heat in fat, whatever kind of fat, at a controlled temperature, right? And this is what we're doing because we heat the oil, then we add the onion, then we reduce the heat so the onions don't burn. And we never cook them until they're 100% brown. Yeah, we just cook them until they become very, very, very soft. Yeah. Right? Now, right. to help this uh, process at first, you just want to make sure that all the onions are covered with the oil and that because that oil will flavor it, so all the flavor will come to the onions. Mm -hmm. You're going to stop staring because if you keep staring, you're not going to allow the onions to accumulate enough heat and then the process will take for, forever. So okay. you stare every now and then and then when you find that it's starting to brown and maybe not to your liking, maybe a little bit extra, that's when you reduce the heat completely and cover the pot and then you just start tossing every now and then until Got it. you reach uh, where you want to be. Right. Now, the chicken is optional, okay? But wait, wait, course, what do you mean? The chicken is optional in Masakha? At that time, at that time. Oh, okay. So if you struggled, because remember, at that time, yeah. there wasn't chicken farms. Available, right, right. Right? So you had a few chickens. You want to eat them all today. Yeah. Go ahead, or you want to have their eggs, and you want to have some chicken um, later in the year. Yeah, yeah, the fair enough. The mentality is different. Remember that back in time, it's not what we have today. Yeah, it's yeah, available. When it gets very, very soft, I'm going to add the summa to it, which actually brings me again to another ingredient from the land. Summa. You have two versions. There is this version, which is um, more like a powder. I love it's good the summa. inside seed of summa. This is the sour flavor, but this is the fruitiness. Yes, of yes, summa. yes, yes. There is another type of summa, which is this. It's slightly darker, and you'll see it's coarser. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, yeah. It looks this more coarse. Coarseness, this is the cover of summa. This is the outer layer. This here has way more tang but way less fruit for the perfect musakhan use both 
a little bit of both because you want the sourness but you also want the fruit plus the Mom, outer you layer do some maths when you cook from safran sorry i'm just checking oh. <laughs> she says of course the onion is soft at this point because the onion is very soft still not soft enough to be spreadable you want that texture so now i'm gonna add the summa i'm adding the inner side of summa which is basically what you get most of the time which is the fruit and um the sourness mm. and then i'm gonna mix don't add a lot of summa at this point i just want to infuse that flavor with the oil right. and the onion a little and at this point i'm going to put the heat on very low and i'm gonna cover this and as you see here now it's not hot but when it's hot you need to use a towel uh every now and then i'm just going to toss uh, like that move it around okay. yes now you for the chicken part you can either have um a full chicken that you cut in four pieces like what we have here yeah okay now this chicken um i you will boil you can boil okay but and you can actually roast most of the time i will roast it but mm. today i boiled it because i do need the broth which now we will add to the onion i'm coming to that so you boil until it's half cooked okay and then you will actually put it in the oven to roast a little bit with the onion so mm. now i'm going to add to my onion see now the color hold on I need these because it's hot now. And the color. Ooh, yeah, the gold. Sort of golden? It's rose actually, but it's just the light on top of me that's. Yeah, really like bad. because of the summa and everything. Yes. This broth you can use in making um, your soups, all your concoctions. Like I added about two ladles, and then I'm going to bring this to the boil. I am going to reduce and thicken, and that's when your onions will be ready. All right, it's thicker, and you will see that it's actually, see, it's it's very thick, right? Now, that is ready, and I wish, I wish, they have to find some way to get the technology to send you that smell. I know, yes. I was just saying, <laughs> I think, I'm, I think you, I'm missing out. It is amazing. All right, so now this is ready so we will get the chicken that we said we made in the morning which we boiled this chicken is ready what we will do here is we will add some of that onion amazing don't don't add too much of the onion that onion should go on the bread okay on the to top the chicken that flavor flavor so just mm -hmm. on the top a little bit just so we infuse the flavor on the chicken itself and then take some of the broth again and put it at the bottom of this just so that okay. chickens don't dry up and then remember we said we have the summa that is coarse right so that's when i will put this because the chicken could use that and now you're more generous in terms of how much of you course, put of course yeah because now this is going to stick on the chicken and that chicken will go on the bread and it's like it has to look mm. it and now, this is going to go into the oven the chicken will take because it's boiled before so it's going to take about 10 to 12 minutes if you didn't cook it before it will take in the oven about 40 minutes um and then you're ready to go to start assembling so i will take you now to assemble so it's true. at home you have the choice to go which is pulled chicken or you can go with the pieces. I always prefer the pieces because that's the authentic way, which is what we're doing here. So we've put a layer of the caramelized onions, which we said we can't say caramelized, the onions for Msakhan, but just so we stay with the lingo that everybody knows. And we are going to- Confit onions, I learned. I learned so much, Walla Dima. Yes. It's actually confit. Now, for after you put the snowbar, you will put a fresh layer of the sumac powder okay of course on top so we're going to put that and starting to look more and more like the msakhan that you all love and adore here this is what we're looking like at the moment mm, getting there traditionally also people make a tower of these breads if it's uh, multiple people eating 
and then you'll put the chickens on top. The traditional one, the only difference that I have made, and I found it looks so much more beautiful, I'll send you the picture, you'll judge, is don't put them on top, people. Put them on the side. They look yeah. much better. And keep the tower yeah. like a pancake tower. Yeah. They're perfect. No additions. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm keeping the integrity of uh, traditional here, but I am changing a little bit with the garnish just so we make it a bit modern. This is the in-between modern and Got it. Um, modern and uh, the traditional one. These are edible flowers and pomegranate seeds. Delicious. Now, if you want to serve this as pizza, go ahead, put some pulled chicken on top. If you want to serve it as msakhal, then that's what we are going to do. We are generous with the chicken. We put two pieces per person. Of course, we all don't serve msakhan without yogurt. Stop. Now, Dimas green shot mm. One spoon on that yogurt. And then, black pepper. And these products are sold by your company, right? You're not just yes. a chef, you're a businesswoman. Yes, my company does Moonik. Since 2013, I'm a person on a mission to spread awareness about Palestinian cuisine, about what it stands for. There is no way to understand the people and history better than through the food that they eat. So now we've put the chicken in the oven and once it's out of the oven, we pulled it away like that. So we remove mm. the bones, we remove all the, what do we call it? Uh, the bones and the skin. And then we pull like that. And then we add to it the msakhan onion, which we have just prepared. And we mix all together very well. Because now this will be a filling. So because we're using it as a filling, it has to all come together nicely. This is crucial. You have to do this part you need to make them smaller because they need to fit inside your cones, the cones that we're going to create now. Sure. I'll show you how we make them. Okay. So you take it and just like what I'm doing, you're just going to have to break it. They're small enough pieces to be able, so you're able to put them inside the cone, yeah? Mm -hmm. What you will need to do this. This is a cone. It's a mold that you can buy in mold shops and kitchen shops. This one is uh, knafe. This is what we're going to use to make the cones. So we're going to take this, which is the strings, these strings, and we're going to roll them over the cone. Oh, wow. Fancy. Okay, what you want to end up with is exactly this. Mm. So we're just going to spoon the filling in like that and then... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Really like you do kusa, but this is much easier because the opening is much it's smaller, bigger. much bigger than the yeah. kusa opening. Okay. Just put as much as it takes. Don't overfill because it will burst. And what's the point of having a, co a cone if it's going to look like Osman <laughs> Wait. <laughs> so here, mm, Oh, God, that looks tortu torturously good. All right. Now, I have done here yogurt. Mm -hmm. Okay, with shatta. And then... I can put some of this onion on top. Why not? In the center where it will be covered, but just so you get more flavor of the msakhan. It's so nice now it. it looks like this. Mm, right? looks now, delicious. I'm going to put a bit of olive oil on top. And the reason being, I want the summa to stick. And at this point, use the coarse summa because you want it to really show and go heavy on the summa. Don't worry, everybody loves lemony flavor. And then, don't forget, just because we're deconstructing and creating different stuff does not mean we forget snowbird. I'm gonna thank you, honestly, for teaching me about my culture, 
for teaching me how to do food and for teaching me um, the passion that you bring to it. And Dima, honestly, thank you. Very uh, informative and I feel like you just lifted my spirits as well. Look, I, I really want to tell you, first of all, thank you very much, very much. The conversation with you is delightful. And I, there's no better way to ever feel the spirit lifted than with the stories of home, the stories of people and how they supported each other. It just makes everything that we face really trivial. It's knowing and resting assured that our people are that, that kind of people. I mean, if that does not make our day, and if Msakhan phone doesn't, I don't know what does.